some special bonus footage. Don't don't do the sawing action back and forth. That will really uh, reduce the length. Boy, if you're here, you found the special bonus footage. Filing pry bars. Yeah, this is good stuff here. So I'm going to use my again. Remember when I talk about how how uh, nice it is to have a little machinist vice in your carpenter bench for doing jobs just like this. This is a perfect example, removable and, and very nice. So this here is a tool that needs to be pretty sharp. We don't want it knife sharp or so sharp that it's going to be brittle and the edge break off, but we want it to bite into the wood. We want it to be effective. People overlook sharpening these things and overlook sharpening tools. I rarely run into anyone that's actually used a shovel that's been sharpened you wouldn't believe the difference. You know, coming from a wildland background, sharpening tools and keeping them sharp, one of the required tools for forest service is to have a file in your pack. They're constantly sharpening and actually wear them out. And it's just not done very often. This particular pry bar, you know how I got this? I was working with a guy, he was pounding on it, on this cat's paw, like, oh, this cat's paw uh, isn't any good. It's, it's, it's dull, it's worn out. He took it and he threw it, threw it on the ground from second story. Well, lunchtime, I went down there and picked it up and put my own pocket. I'm like, you know, if you want a fool, a fool and his money are quickly parted, you know, because I, I know I'd take this thing home and put an edge on it and it'd be just like new, if not better. Okay, very simple. Anybody can do this here. So we've got this in our vise. We're going to get a good heavy, depending on how much work you need to do, but a good heavy file. Uh, this is a 12 inch uh, bastard file here. This is a file card. This is a tool that you want to have with your files. It's a real stiff brush that helps to uh, clean out all of the shavings and it keeps the file. It lasts much longer if you do that, as well as um, it cuts much better. You, if you don't have one and you have a cotton shirt, you can, you can even pull it or push it. You'll see me doing this when I'm doing a lot of filing on axes uh, and you'll just see the metal shavings on your shirt or you can do it on your pant leg. It, it, it's not as good as a file card, but it will work. Also, stay to the end and I'll show you how to make one of these. This is the best file handle you'll ever use in your life. And it's made out of a golf ball handle and it's wonderful. Uh, best, best one you can, and you can make it yourself. You don't have to buy anything. But what we want is we just want to roll that down to a nice point. We don't want any flat spot, so, so we're rolling the file. We're just going to rebuild that, that edge. Keep checking it. We don't want it to come down just to a moderate point, but we want to maintain that round, that curvature, and that, and, and that motion. It, 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 that's what's so good about that, that golf ball. That, that motion is very natural. We don't want to see any facets. A facet is a flat spot, like you see on the way diamonds are cut, that causes a reflection or refraction of light. We want it to be smooth. Just like that. Once we finish that up, we can go, this is splitting hairs here, but you can go with a, this is an eight inch, uh, a, a finer file, and we can get a really nice polish on there and knock off any flat pots, any facets. Just like that. We'll turn it and do the same thing here. You can see a little bit better from the angle. Let me show you the difference here. So you can see there, see how that's been brought down to that point. Can you see that there? How much, how, how blunt this is. And, and you can see it's kind of bent over. This is, this tool is going to perform much better now. And I mean, how, how long does that take? It doesn't take very long. Here you can see on your file, it needs carded. See all those, those shavings in there. You see the metallic glittery. We can take that file card and those just go away. See, it's going to just work much better now. That's what we want there. You can see we got that down to a nice point right there. That's going to really bite and cut in the wood. And now we got, or we'll take our fine file and we'll just clean that up. Roll those edges. Oh, it's nice. Nice to have a tool performing. It's optimum level, something that's just so overlooked. It's just part of our, I know, I was raised that way, that our disposable mindset. Throw it away, don't fix anything. But look at that, that's probably right there. That little edge on there is probably better than it was when it was brand new. And we'll do the same thing 
on the other side. Now our wonder bar is definitely going to need some work. I've been using this on nails and subfloor and hitting screws with it. You can see how bad that the condition is on that. Now this has got a little ground a little bit different. This can be a chisel grind. So it's going to be flat on the back side and it's going to have that chisel on the front. So whenever you're working with a chisel grind, the first thing you do is flatten out the back side of it. Always, always, anything that's got a, a chisel grind. A chisel grind is this right there. Just that's why it's, it's named after a chisel where it's flat on one side and it's got that bevel on the other side. Whether it be a planing iron or a wonder bar or a shovel, the first thing you do before we do anything is knock off flatten out that back side. And usually it doesn't take very much. It's just a just a little bit of work right there. Boy, isn't that a, it's you it's hard to explain the joy of using a, a really high quality file, a beautiful file. Look look how it cuts. And it's just you can with the with the light there you can just see the shavings rolling off of it. Oh, it's just a, one of those wonderful experiences. It doesn't take very much. You can see right there. We're we're flattened out really nicely. That's all we need. So now we've got to we've got to deal with this chisel. So this is very simple. Just chalk your vise down so you got something to support on the back. But look how look how much damage is on it. You think that's going to cut very good? It's not. So we're just going to follow follow that pattern that angle. Just like just like we kind of file an axe. And it's always good to have a little bit of a ro that rolling pattern, just a little bit of a rounding. It is nice. And we'll file that down, keeping our file clean. I'm carding on my pants there because it, it does work. And we're going to keep that filing that down until we get those nicks and the scratches on the back. Now you might get, develop a little bit of a wire there. There's nothing wrong with just knocking that off. So there you go. I've done one side there. Which one do you think is going to be a more effective uh, tool for getting under when you got to get into a really tight spot? Which one's going to do less damage to the wood and just going to be better to use? And what did that take? Just maybe 60 seconds or so to do one side. But uh, right there, I mean, that's all, that's all you need. Yeah, here's a better angle. But I mean, it's, it's, it's just, there's just no comparison there and it just doesn't take very long to do. We'll do the same thing on the other end. Here's the unfinished. Right there, but with a couple file strokes, we'll, that thing will be just like new or better. There you go. One note on filing. Make sure when you're filing, you always push a file only on the cut stroke. They're designed to cut forward. Don't, don't do the sawing action back and forth. That will really uh, reduce the length, or the, the longevity and the life of your file. Files cut forward and they have two sides so file and you'll feel when it starts slipping when you'll feel when it stops cutting when that happens flip it over and start working the other side of the file and when that becomes full that's when you card your file you know bring it across your shirt here you know clean clean it up right there you can see the shavings and it'll work good or use your file card which is even better but the reality is sometimes you don't always have that and having a good set of files is so important and never throw old files away because these are something, some of the best tool steel, uh, quality steel you're going to get. And they make wonderful chisels, they make wonderful knives, and you should never, ever see a, a file in the garbage can. I and mean, there's blacksmiths and knife makers that would, uh, uh, are re spinning in their grave knowing someone threw a file away because they're such a good quality steel. An interesting thing though, the older files are better than the new files because many of the new cheaper files are case hardened. What that means is that quality steel I'm talking about things I don't completely understand here, so if I, if I misspoke, speak, please correct me in the comments. But from what I understand it, that quality steel on the old files is, goes all the way through. The whole thing is, is of that hardened steel. Where the new files, they case harden, meaning just the outside, and then the inside is an inferior steel. That's what I've read and what I understand. So old files, you see them at garage sales for uh, 20 cents a piece or whatever, um, get them because that's something you just cannot, cannot duplicate. What files should you have? You should have, um, if you're putting together a kit, what you want is a mill bastard file. It's a good all around file for sharpening anything. And I would say about an eight incher, an eight or a 10 inch. They're gonna come in six inch, eight, 
10, 12, 14s, the bigger files are hard to handle. I would probably recommend something really similar to this. This is an eight. If you have heavier duty things that you want to do like axes and shovels, I would jump up to a 10. So just get a number 10 mill bastard file, a good quality. The Swiss made are the best that I know of that you can get currently um, and something that you want to have in your kit. So the quick recap, the three you want, the what you're looking for at garage sales, number one, the Wonder Bar, a good all around pry bar, number two, a good cat's paw, and number three, a good heavy wrecking bar. You're set. You don't need anything more than that. You can do everything you need to do. And I know what I was going to ask you. So this is number one of the 10. The 10 tools, the top 10 essential tools that we talked about the tool belt, which one would you like to see next? Should we cover hammers? Do you want to cover tape measures? Do you want to cover the speed square? Chisels? Philosophy behind those things? There's a whole video on, on, on all of those and I enjoy doing it. It's, it's just, just amazing to me how much there is that uh, um, that a person's got to learn uh, that you pick up over the years. You take it for granted. I really become aware of that when I'm working, you know, working with my son. All of these things that I just assume are just automatic, you, you can't. Um, basic things like that. So um, my wife has been really good and she's been, been really pounding on me lately. It's like, you need to cover these things in detail because she moderates the comments and goes through and answers a lot of the questions. She's seeing what you guys are saying. And it's like, don't skip the details. We want to know what's the reason for this and what's the methodology behind it. If we have a guy that hasn't worked in the trades, um, like I have, uh, don't understand these things. You know why? We're going to spend our hard earned money on pry bars and we go to the big box store and there's about 50 different varieties. Which one do I need? Which one do I get? Um, so this kind of, well, hopefully this will help uh, make a right decision. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video. So as you may have noticed, this wasn't actually part two or the second tool. This was a breakout section, a 1.1, I'll call it, because we needed to expand a little bit on pry bars. Who, who knew that there was an entire video in pry bars? So you want to make your husband, boyfriend happy? Go to wranglermart.com and you can pick out lots of these tools. They're not expensive, but they're great stocking stuffers and they're a good way to start someone building their kit. You don't have to put together everything at once, but a little bit at a time. And before you know it, well, it takes a lifetime to collect an entire set of tools. And hopefully you'll be able to have a nice set you can pass on to your kids. So like, the ref re like so many people, we don't have to start from scratch. Part two. So I ask in the video, we've got uh, nine more tools, the essential tools in the tool belt. Which would you like to see next? Should we cover hammers, the difference between framing, waffles, smooth face, different styles, finish hammers, the different types of claws, tape measures, speed squares. Oh, there's so much to talk about. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next, and I will make that video today, and we should be able to get it uploaded tomorrow. So if you haven't already, I invite you to click the thumbs up. It's a way that you can support the channel, and we really appreciate it. And if you'd like to follow the project, if you'd like to see more modern homesteading, I invite you to subscribe. I click on the button on the right. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.